take a look at this. I just received my brand new GoSun solar oven. It's a remarkable piece of engineering. There's a parabolic reflector that folds up to turn the stove off. When you want to turn it on, you just open it. Inside the handle here is where you put your food. And then you slide it back in. Place the stove in the sun. And within moments, you have an amazing meal ready to eat. Using no fossil fuels, no electricity, just the power of the sun. And that is what we're about to do. This, the first test of my Go Sun stove is about to commence. Take a look at what I'm going to cook. I have ready to put in the stove corn, potatoes, carrots, broccoli, onions, garlic, and stallion from No Evil Foods. It is a vegan meat, 100% plant based. It is not fake meat. It is real food. So let's prepare everything and load the stove and cook. The cooking tray is loaded and ready to insert into the stove. Look at this incredible yummy lunch I have prepared for the sun to cook for me. Let's do it. To load the stove, you simply insert the cooking tray into the tube, making sure the vent hole is pointing up. And the next thing I need to do is just place the stove in the sun and wait for it to cook. Here we go. Okay, the stove's in the sun. Cooking has commenced. It is 11.15. We will see how long it takes to cook my lunch. Beginning now. I've had to place some weights on the stove's legs because it's quite windy and uh, you know a parabolic dish such as the one that is cooking the stove right now could uh, blow over in the wind damaging the glass tube. So hopefully that will serve to keep it from blowing over. I also have a pot behind it uh, that's quite heavier so hopefully it'll stay in place but I'm also going to sit out here and monitor it just in case. Take a look over to the left. You can see my garden. Yes, I'm growing a garden in a 55 gallon barrel. Um, design I found on YouTube where you cut holes in the side of the barrel using a certain technique that involves fire and a two by four and a saw. Works very well. And uh, we're growing some uh, really yummy greens using an old repurposed barrel. And if you'll notice at the top, there's a tube. Let's go look while my lunch cooks. This tube is a worm composting bin. So down in the tube is where we put our leftover vegetable waste from the kitchen. And inside this barrel, there's probably 250 red worms that uh, make short work of the the compost, turning it into to fertilizer for the soil. I had a nice salad last night uh, using greens from this barrel garden. And then right here we have repurposed some old cat litter tubs for squash. And over on the other side of the porch, buckets of tomatoes. All right, well, it looks like there's uh, one factor that is going to slow uh, my cooking down, and that is there's uh, quite a bit of wind, as I mentioned before, and it's blowing some puffy clouds over the sun every few moments. So I'll get full sun, then I'll get reduced sun, then I'll get full sun, and so on. Um, the stove will still cook. It will just extend the cooking time. All right, let's take a peek at the food and check its temperature. Oh, wow. Doesn't look like it started cooking yet. 57, 58 or so. So it is uh, still cool, but that's because some of the food was in the fridge, of course, before I put it in here. And we have a cloud issue. So well, let's put it back in and stop bothering it, and maybe it will cook faster. Okay, 
It's been 30 minutes. Let's check the temperature of the food. See how it's coming along. Ninety-five, ninety-two. It's right. It's going up. It's rising, but not as fast as I thought it would. And um, well, that's because we have clouds moving over the sun every few moments. So it is cooking. It's just going to take it longer. Okay, so my lunch has been cooking now for one hour. Let's take a look. Oh wow! Look at this steam. Temperature is 158 degrees and needs a little more time. Excellent. It's going to be yummy. The Go Sun stove is really cranking out the heat now. The sun is directly overhead. Um, it's been an hour and 15 minutes. So let's take a look. Look at the steam. Ooh, 158. It's cooking very well. I'm going to sample it in about 10 minutes and see how we're doing. Of course, no, it would have cooked faster if I had, uh, you know, if I was not yanking the cooking tray out every 15 minutes, that's for sure. But I'm really excited because this is the first time I've used this amazing stove. Look at that steam pouring out. It's been an hour and 20 minutes now. I'm going to sample one of the veggies just to get an idea of how well it's cooking. Let's try a potato since they are going to cook probably the slowest. There we go. Ooh, that is hot. Ooh. It needs a little more. But boy, that's good. Mmm. Very hot. I'm not going to check the temperature this time. I'll check it next time. So you might be wondering how this amazing stove works. Well, it's really simple. The sunlight shines from outer space, 93 million miles away, comes through our atmosphere, slams into the parabolic dish, reflectors, and hits the tube. The tube itself is an evacuated vacuum tube. So in other words, in between the two layers of the tube, there is no air. It is like outer space. And then there's a coating um, of different materials, including copper and aluminum nitrile, which uh, allow the radiation from the sun, the visible light, to enter the tube and the infrared radiation as well which then bounces around inside the tube reflecting off of the coatings that I just mentioned keeping the heat inside the tube and uh, not only does that uh, exponentially rise the temperature but also it does not allow the heat to escape uh, so it gets hotter and hotter and cooks your food and that is amazing science Okay, it's been almost two hours now. I'm gonna take another look at the food. It's been cooking really fast for the, for the last 30 minutes. We're getting some really good sun. Temperature is 100 and, it was 189 when I opened it. Let's try that same potato. Oh wow, that's hot. And that's done. Yep, it is done. Let's check a carrot just to be safe. Whew. Hot, hot, hot. It's a little al dente, but boy, it's good. 179. I'm letting it cool by pulling it out. So what I'm going to do, since it's practically finished, is close it up. I'm going to close the well, I would close the reflector, but it doesn't want to close. Um, I'll just point it away from the sun and let it simmer in its own juices for a while. 
and then uh, after about 15 minutes, I'll have lunch. Okay, so I've brought the stove back inside. I'm going to let the uh, food simmer for a little while um, to take on some good flavors from all my spices that I added. But I want to show you something. I can actually grasp the tube, the uh, cooker tube, and it's totally cool to the touch. But the inside of the tube, sizzling, sizzling hot, over 200 degrees. So... That's an amazing piece of technology. It allows you to cook your food with nothing more than the sun. All right, it is lunchtime. It's been two hours and five minutes since I loaded the stove. And here is the product. Whoa, gotta be careful or I'll break the stove. Oh boy, this is going to be good. And there it is. Time to eat. All right, so my first test of the Go Sun stove was a great success. It cooked my lunch perfectly, and now I have decided to cook something else in the stove. Cookies. That's right. So I'm going to cook some cookies, see how long it takes, and see how they taste. So I put the cookies into the stove at 225, and the sun is super intense right now, so hopefully these will cook really fast. Let's check the temperature of the cookies. They've been in about three minutes, and right now we have 117 degrees already. Wow, this is going to be fast, I can already tell. What an amazing invention. Thank you, Go Sun. Oh, those cookies are looking good. It's been about 25 minutes, and uh, the cookies are cooking away. Quite a bit of steam been pouring out of the uh, vent here. I feel like I need to let the steam out or they're going to, uh, well, steam. And steam cookies, that's kind of a new thing. I don't know if it'll be good or not. Look, take a look. See, the first ones look pretty good, but as you go back, they're starting to sort of, I'm not quite sure what you call that, but it's becoming one long cookie strip. Um, but it should be interesting. If I let them cool, they'll set up and then they'll be really good. So I'm going to go ahead and pull them out. And let them cool off and then sample them. Look at that. The cookies are ready. Now it's time to sample one. Mmm. Now that is a good cookie.